Life is unpredictable, and we never know what could cause the end of humanity. So let's discuss some crazy upcoming natural disasters that could end the world in 2024. Starting off our list are solar flares. Most energy from a solar flare is radiated away as ultraviolet and x-ray light. However, the intense energy of a flare can also heat up nearby gas in the sun's atmosphere, launching enormous blobs of charged particles known as coronal mass ejection. CMEs out into space. Now, if that happens, radio and radar systems around the world can black out, and electrical grids may become overloaded and lose power, which would cause absolute chaos. Now, some experts fear that a sufficiently large CME could create an internet apocalypse by overloading undersea internet cables and leaving parts of the world without web access for weeks or months, which is such a scary thought. Long-standing blackouts could potentially cost America alone $41.5 billion a day. Not to mention, with the electrical grid down, the economy would be greatly destabilized. Now, satellites and space stations which orbit beyond the protection of Earth's atmosphere could also be debilitated by the renegade radiation of CMEs. Now, space weather experts at NASA and other agencies take this threat seriously and closely monitor the sun for potentially hazardous activity. Next up, we have the Toba Supervolcano. Lake Toba Supervolcano on the Indonesian island of Samra is currently home to the largest volcanic lake on Earth, formed 74,000 years ago when it last blew in the biggest eruption for 25 million years. It is estimated that around 2,800 cubic kilometers of volcanic ash and lava were thrown into the atmosphere, and it may be about to erupt again. As with any super eruption, huge qualities of ash and sulfur dioxide produced can have a devastating effect on the global climate. But a number of factors make the prospect of a Toba super eruption much more intimidating than, say, one at Yellowstone. Toba is located on the densely populated island of Samara, home of over 50 million vulnerable people, and is only 40 kilometers from the Indian Ocean, in which catastrophic tsunamis would certainly be generated. Additionally, reports of volcanic gases and heating of the ground surface have led to suggestions that the volcano may again be waking up. Now, if it happened again, it would blacken the sky, send temperatures plummeting, destroy crops globally, and produce huge tsunamis. It would likely end the lives of millions immediately, and and many, many more over the course of a few years. Moving on to the Helena Slump. A great danger is posed by the possible collapse of the southern portion of Kilauea Volcano on the big island of Hawaii. The south slope is geologically unstable. Called the Helena Slump, this could drop 12,000 cubic kilometers of rock into the Pacific Ocean, generating a mega tsunami that would go around the Pacific Ocean and reach the western seaboard of North America in a matter of hours, overpowering coastal communities. There is evidence that a similar collapse of the nearby Mauna Loa around 12,000 years ago generated a tsunami with a run-up height of over 400 meters. Now, even as recently as 1975, movement of the Helena Slump generated a smaller yet destructive tsunami that reached California. Given that the slump is continually active and moving, it might only take a jolt from an earthquake in the tectonically active state to set in motion this catastrophic chain of events. Now, the scary thing is that we can't do anything to stop it, and this threat will be looming over us. Now let's discuss gamma ray bursts. Gamma rays are the most dangerous forms of radiation. Gamma ray bursts likely result from the merging of two dying stars and can travel through almost anything, so that is not good for us humans. The event generates powerful beams of energy, firing charged particles into space in a spectacular surge of light. Now, if Earth were to be in the path of a gamma ray burst, radiation would destroy our atmosphere and produce nitrogen oxides, a gas that would eradicate the ozone layer. Without the ozone layer, the sun ultraviolet rays would reach the surface unimpeded, wiping out the plankton in the ocean that produces oxygen to the atmosphere and disrupting the food chain, while causing other serious effects such as skin cancer. Presently, mechanisms for this generation of gamma ray burst emissions are not fully understood, so we just have to hope that one strong enough doesn't wipe us out. Now we have the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault is a continental right lateral strike slip 
transform fault that extends roughly 750 miles through the Californias. It forms the tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Now, a study found that the risk of a large earthquake here may be increasing more rapidly than scientists had previously believed. The risk is currently concentrated on the southern section of the fault, aka the region around Los Angeles, because strong earthquakes have occurred relatively recently on the central 1857 and northern 1906 segments of the fault, while the southern section has not seen any similar rupture for at least 300 years. Now, if or when it ruptures, it would be strongly felt and potentially cause significant damage throughout much of Southern California. All the data suggests that the fault is ready for the next big earthquake, but exactly when the triggering will happen and when the earthquake will occur is unknown, which is one of the scariest parts. Now we have the North Sea Tsunami. The North Sea may seem an unlikely place for a devastating tsunami, but climate change has led to concern that a submarine landslide in the region might lead to just this. Scientists have suggested that over 6,000 years ago, a sharp sea level rise attributed to a changing climate and the rapid melting of ice, and it added weight to the submarine glacial deposits at the edge of the Norwegian continental shelf, destabilizing them and causing a 300 kilometer long landslide. This generated a tsunami that reached heights of up to 20 meters in the Shetland Islands, 10 in the Norwegian coast, and 6 meters off the northern and western coast of Scotland. Now, should Earth experience such rapidly warming climate again, and experience the associated melting of the Greenland and or West Antarctic ice sheets, a similar event might as well be possible, which today would affect the coastal populations of Scotland and Norway and perhaps even London. On to the Cascadian Big One. At the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, just off the west coast of North America, and running from Northern California to Vancouver Island, is a subduction zone, a place where the Pacific Ocean floor is being forced beneath the North American landmass. Now, the rate of movement of the ocean floor here is currently just 40 millimeters a year, but the upper part of the system is currently stuck, meaning that the North American plate is being compressed. At some point, the pressure being built up has to be released, and this will be in the form of a massive earthquake, perhaps up to a magnitude magnitude of 9. This could cause a collapse of the coastal region of up to 2 meters and a possible horizontal displacement of 30 meters. Now, shortly after the intense shaking subsides, the coastal community will be struck by a tsunami that can make the 2011 Japanese wave look small. Around 7 million people live in this region from Vancouver through Seattle to Tacoma and Portland. Scientists have calculated that in the last 10,000 years, the region has suffered 41 large earthquakes, occurring with an average interval of 244 years. Years, and the last was a magnitude 9, and that was 315 years ago, so this could happen at any time. Next up is that an asteroid hits Earth. On February 15, 2013, a fireball streaked across the sky over Russia and exploded in a window-shattering airburst. Now, it was nearly a disaster as a ground strike may have ended the lives of tens of thousands of people. Hours after the event, a space rock three times larger threaded the space between Earth and its artificial satellites. Now, had this asteroid struck a densely populated location like New York, it would have destroyed Midtown instantly, blasted down surrounding skyscrapers, and rained firestorm spawning meteors for hours. Hours. Now, short-term death tolls might have reached the millions. Now, of course, water covers 71% of Earth, and many large inland regions remain sparsely populated. Thus, in the rare case such a massive rock actually hit Earth, it would stand a small chance of striking a population center. But a nation wrecker or even a planet killer could come knocking someday, perhaps sooner than we'd like to think. Now we have a mega thrust earthquake. On April 1st, 2014, a magnitude 8.2 earthquake occurred 97 kilometers off the northwest coast of Chile, causing landslides and a tsunami to hit the coast. This earthquake created the possibility for an even larger earthquake for Chile in the near future due to the location of the earthquake. Now, the earthquake originated from the subduction zone where one tectonic plate, the Nazca Plate, is plunging underneath another, the South American Plate. This subduction zone lies within the Ring of Fire, an arc in the Pacific containing 75% of the world's active volcanoes, which causes many of the world's seismic activity. 
activity. When a tectonic plate moves under another, faults can come under severe amounts of stress, and any release of tension causes seismic activity, namely earthquakes. Now, the April 2014 earthquake was a mega thrust earthquake, or a major earthquake caused by the release of tension from a subduction zone. Now, it only relieved 33% of the tension on the faults, leaving the rest to be relieved in the near future. And last on our list is black holes. Our galaxy is full of black holes dozens of miles wide. Their gravity is so strong they swallow everything. Now, based on such observations and even more theoretical arguments, researchers guesstimate there are about 10 million black holes in the Milky Way. Now, if a normal star were moving towards us, we'd know it, but with a black hole, there is little warning. Assuming that black holes are randomly distributed throughout the galaxy and that there really are a few hundred million of them present, this likely means that the closest black hole to Earth is only around 40 to 80 light years away. Now, if a black hole contacts the Earth, of course it will swallow us. But we don't need to be swallowed in order to suffer catastrophic consequences. If a black hole simply passes very close by the Earth, it would cause what's known as a tidal disruption event, an event where the black hole's gravitational influence on the closer side of the Earth is so much stronger than the farther side of the Earth that it actually begins ripping our planet apart. Similarly, the top side of Earth would be pulled down relative to the center, while the bottom side gets pulled upward. What I'm pretty much saying is the gravitational and atomic bonds holding Earth together Together could be shattered, transforming our planet from a solid sphere into a thin stretch debris stream that looks like a piece of spaghetti. Now, in fact, astronomers have named this exact process spaghettification because of the stretching effects that black holes have. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 upcoming natural disasters that could end the world in 2024. Do you think any of these events could happen? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host, Emily, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.